Greetings, everybody. Let's continue along with our discussion of Stokes' theorem. And so we kind of went through the proof last time of what Stokes' theorem was, kind of giving you a computational idea for why um, the result is what it is. But now let's actually work through an example so you can kind of see the nuts and bolts of how each side kind of works together and why all of those assumptions are going to be necessary. And so what we want to do is to verify Stokes' theorem for this vector field F being X, Y, Y, Z, and X, Z on a hemisphere that's a um, of radius A centered at the origin and we want the top half of that hemisphere. Um, we want an orientation on this surface. We need it to be oriented upward so we want our Z components to be positive for that thing and um, in particular, we don't want the entire sphere. We're only going to take the sphere where y is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So what we can do is to start with a parameterization of our surface. So we'll just parameterize the entire sphere, um, that being just with spherical coordinates, obviously, that x is a cosine u sine v, uh, y is going to be a sine u sine v, and z is going to be a cosine v. Where if we're doing the entire sphere, we've got u and v in 0 to 2 pi cross 0 to pi. Our tangent vectors in that case are just going to be the partial of our parameterization with respect to u. That's going to give us one of the tangent vectors. For the second tangent vector, we'll do the partial of s with respect to v. That gives us this vector here. And so we want our desired orientation to be upward. So if we check the normal on that one, so if we just do partial s partial u cross partial s partial v, we get an expression that looks like minus um, a cubed cosine u sine squared minus a squared sine u sine squared um, minus a squared cosine v sine v. Well, if we kind of take that thing and we plug in a point, so we just pick a point at random, pi over 4, pi over 4, plug that in and look at the normal, then we get something that evaluates to this expression. Now even just looking at the z component, it's obvious that that thing's not going to be um, in the positive direction. And so this is not the orientation that we actually want for our surface. So how do we go about fixing that? Well, we just reverse the order of our cross product. So we will take the normal vector being partial s partial v cross partial s partial u. So that just gives us the negative of what we actually had. And this then is going to be the normal um, to the surface that we actually want. So we've given this parameterization that's included in the problem. So now we've got the correct parameterization in this. And so an important part of Stokes' theorem is that we want um, the correct parameterization for our curve. We want our curve to have this positive orientation so it traces things out. And so a natural kind of big question that goes along with this is how does this normal actually influence how we parameterize our curve? Well, kind of going back and again looking at Stokes' theorem, what are our hypotheses for those? We had an oriented piecewise smooth surface, got that. The boundary of S, okay, we know what that's going to be, that's going to come up. We've got our vector field with its continuous partials, so we're good there. And so we've got these two sides. You've got the curl of F dot DS, and then we've got the integral um, over the boundary of S of F dot DR. So for the first part of, so probably a good stopping place for this video is to compute the curl of this so that we can verify both sides. Well, if we compute the left side, so we're looking at the curl of F. We computed that, so the partial with respect to X, partial with respect to Y, partial with respect to Z of XY, YZ, and XZ gives us an expression of this form, which when we take all of those derivatives, just gives us the curl just being minus y, minus z, and minus x. And with our desired orientation of partial s, partial v, um, partial s, partial u, 
um, for our normal vector. We kind of put those together, and if we do <clears throat> um, our curl evaluated on our surface, we just plug in our values for x, our values for y, our values for z, respectively, and then doing the dot product of the curl dot uh, curl of f dot ds, we get this expression, which it's kind of long. That's about as simple as it gets. We get an expression that we'll just call little f of u v d a. So if we perform that integration over s, so the curl of f dot ds, well, that's going to be our integral from 0 up to pi, 0 up to pi over 2 for v. So remember, these are spherical coordinates. So v is the angle between the positive z-axis and um, our vector. So we only want the upper hemisphere. So v is going to go from 0 to pi over 2. We only want the part where y is going to be positive. So in the xy plane, that would just be our quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, which means that our angle theta is only just going to go from 0 up to pi for that. So if we have those as our limits of integration of f of u v du dv, then we get an expression that looks like negative 2a cubed over 3. So this is actually, so we've gone through, we've computed the curl, um, or we've computed the surface integral of our curl dot ds, um, and so we know that one side of Stokes' theorem should give us a negative 2a cubed over 3. So this is probably a good place to stop for this one, so hang tight for the next one, and we'll actually then come back and compute the right side of Stokes' theorem and see how the orientation um, actually comes into play at that point. So I'll hang tight. I will see you guys in that one.